Church on such a delightful Sunday morning. Welcome you here in the sanctuary and those of you at home as well watching on Zoom or uh, Facebook Live. So glad you're here. We're going to start right now by singing our opening chant, God is all there is. so glad that you're here. I am Reverend Sidney. I'm the assistant minister here. And I just want to remind you all lovingly that yes, we are still wearing our masks. I know that's a pain. However, it's not as bad as the pain as intubation and, and knowing that your family is grieving you or someone else. So please, please, please just remember over the mouth, over the nose. We love you so much. When you get outside and have coffee, you can put them aside. And we are glad that you're here. And here's Mary Catherine O'Hart. And I'm going away now. And I wholeheartedly agree. Um, but good morning and welcome. We are delighted you have joined us here in person or via Zoom or Facebook. For those here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. So let's get to what we're all about here and just join in prayer. And just knowing that truly God is all there is. God is the life source energy. God is the love intelligence of the universe. God is everywhere present in, through, and as everything, every thought, every fiber, every tree and caterpillar that becomes a butterfly and the cars and the people. God is life itself. God is the divine creator. He created everything on and for purpose. And our life's journey is to enjoy that purpose, to discover more and more purposes for ourselves. We, like God, are unlimited in our creativity and our abilities because God is our divine source. And we just really embody this and just appreciate it in all the loving ways that we were able to express God through all the acts of kindness and caring that we do, through the acts of prayer and gratitude and loving and creativity, and through business and work and joy and just simply through living. We just say thank you, God, when we appreciate our lives and we live it to the very best of our ability at the time. And I am so very grateful, knowing this, I'm so divinely grateful for the teachings of Science of Mind and the North Hollywood Church and those that love and support us by attending in person or on Zoom for our fabulous board that kept us going through those challenging times for the leadership of Dr. Mark and Reverend Sidney and Reverend Nadine and Reverend Mark, for the practitioners, for those who care for our children and those who care for our grands, and of course, for those who are able to attend virtually or in person. I am just deeply great, grat, grateful, and I simply say thank you, God. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's 
Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let's sing. Let's settle down and meditate. <laughs> ah, let's truly take that joy and frivolity inside, knowing that God is everywhere present. We're just going to simply use our breath. We use the Vipassana meditation here, which is simply allowing our breath to guide us, to take us deep inside and get cozy with God. Feel that loving presence that just loves us as we are and as we are not. There's no judgment in God. So just let go of that and feel yourself taking gentle deep breaths and simply breathe in and breathe out. And you may wish to repeat your favorite mantra, God is the love that I am, I am the love that God is, and continue to breathe in and breathe out, knowing that our minds will stray and wander a bit with thoughts or sensations, just simply let them pass by like a gently floating cloud and continue to focus on your breath and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out.
everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Everyone will change. No one goes unchanged. The young become the old mysteries do unfold for that's the way of time nothing and no one goes unchanged There are not many things in life we can be Thank you, Sherry. Thank you so much. All right, good morning. Welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, the law of non-resistance. So in the Bible, it says, resist not evil. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Wow, that, is, that sounds so great, doesn't it? Yes, I'm going to overcome evil with good. And yet, evil seems to persist, and I don't really want to overcome it with good. Um, the Chinese uh, say that water is the most powerful element because it's perfectly non-resistant. You know, over time, water will always wear away 
stones even, right? And so Jesus gives us this teaching. He says, resist not evil. I think he knew in reality, big picture, if we chunk way up from the absolute level, there is no evil. Therefore, there is nothing to resist. Except here, on the level of the earth plane, it certainly seems like there is the appearance of evil. So we say in the science of mind that evil comes from a belief in two powers. That we believe that there's good and something else. That there's God and something else. And so the way we so often talk about this, or at least the way I do, is that Adam and Eve are in paradise in the garden and everything is great. It's great. Everything is fantastic. And they eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which means they went from believing in one power to believing, oh, there's God and something else. And when they embrace that belief that there is something other than God, that's when paradise was all over. Right? So Ernest Holmes teaches us that our soul is the subjective level of our thought. The subjective level of consciousness is what Ernest Holmes refers to as the soul level. And he says in that soul level, everything that's ever been said to you, everything that's ever been done to you, everything you've ever said to yourself, everything you've ever done to yourself, it's all stored there. It's like the seed of memory. Our history resides at this soul level. So he goes on to teach us that whatever we feel deeply, good or bad, is outpictured by our subconscious mind, which just acts always as a faithful servant, because that subconscious mind is the level of spiritual law. Mm. So our body of affairs, what they are actually showing to us, you know, is what we have been seeing, uh, what we've been available to, what we've been making welcome, what we've been interested in, maybe what we've been talking about, imagining. See. If you don't run, if, and what I mean by run, if you don't take charge of your subconscious mind, someone else will do it for you. And the only problem with that is they will not have your highest and best interest at heart. They will have their highest and best interest at heart. So if we are centered in what I will call today right thinking, you know, the kind of thinking we like to do in the science of mind where we're on the affirmative side of the street, if we send out only goodwill to all other people on the face of the earth, and who is without fear, you know, cannot be touched or influenced by the negative thoughts or actions of other people. So if only, what I'm trying to say is that if only good comes out from me, I will receive only good back, all right? At least that's the big application, that's the big teaching of the principle. So catching, sort of capturing the feeling of our greater good is so important. Because Ernest Holmes teaches us in Living the Science of Mind, one of my favorite things he says is that feeling is intelligently directed creation. So when we catch the feeling of an experience, he says that's when we're really doing it. That's when we are in the process of creation. So first the feeling, always first the feeling, and then the manifestation. So what if we really felt everyone, God, the world, people, intended us good? See, so for all men are God in manifestation, right? I mean, we teach that we are all God in form, awaiting the opportunity given by him, ourselves, to serve the divine plan of our life, right? There is a divine plan that's unfolding for all of us. Hmm. If we will bless our enemy, see, and this is one of the things that Buddha teaches us. Buddha says, you must bless your enemy for he allows you to grow. Wow, that is so hard. That is so gnarly, isn't it? It's like, I know in theory it sounds really good, and yeah, that's what I'm signed up for, a life of growth here, but bless your enemy for he allows you to grow. Oh my God, when we have an enemy, we are being called on the carpet. We are being stretched in every way. We are being called forward to be the best version of ourself. Oh. And I just don't want to do it sometimes, you know? I just don't want to do it. I... All right, so I'll tell you honestly. So every time I see... Mr. Putin on TV, I have a reaction. And then I have to correct my reaction. 
and then I have to step into the science of mind teaching in a more full way. You know, so hating the enemy has not worked historically. Look at, if we look, having an enemy that we just hate and we all agree is so bad and they're so terrible and they're the problem and on and on and on, that has never really worked out very well for anybody, has it? You know, and so when we talk in science of mind, I know this sounds probably very uh, lofty and, and pie in the sky-ish, but the idea of loving our enemy, you know, have we ever really done that? I mean, really? I mean, because it seems to me, if we look at our history on the face of the earth, we, you know, we, we get upset with someone and we fight with them. And somebody gets upset with us and they fight with us. And we do this and we repeat this again and again and again. But if we bless our enemy again and again and again, ultimately, the promise is that they will have no power over us. So what if we all did this? No, I mean, really, what if we did this? How, how long could we do it? You know, I think we should just try for a week, you know, just for one week. One week, every time you turn on the TV, every time you hear the news, every time you see the paper, whatever it is, you know, if you get your little feed on your laptop, and, your phone, what if we all did this? What if we blessed? What if we sent love and goodwill to every person on the planet, especially those we don't want to, we don't have to keep naming them, but especially those individuals that we don't want to do this for, because why, would, why should we do this? Because if we will do this, if we will take the high road, they will be robbed of their power, ultimately, right? This is, yes, this is true. This is how the spiritual principles work, right? The, remember the old saying that the generation that loves war will not be the generation that brings peace. Mm. So here we are. We face this again, and it comes around again, and it comes around again, all right? So non-resistance comes, I think, through spiritual understanding, that at the highest spiritual level, God never works against God's self. God never says, you know, I got to have some discord on earth or I'm just not happy today. You know, who can I pit against each other? You know, that's, that doesn't exist in the mind of God. And people say, well, I, and I know, I know people always want to say, I don't want to be a doormat, or science of mine has taught me not to be a doormat. Well, when you use non-resistance with wisdom, uh, no one will ever be able to step on you or wipe their feet on you. I mean, that's not what we're talking about. See, people think if I say, send love to Russia, send love to Putin, send blessing there, that that's going to make them stronger. That's going to make them more empowered. That's not what we're talking about. When we're saying, when I want you to know the truth about Putin, the truth about Putin is Putin is also a child of God. Take a deep breath with me here. Putin is a child of God. God doesn't look at Putin and say, wow, this one's trouble here. You know, this one's really getting to be a problem for me. So it's no mistake, you know, uh, what we're talking about, this law of non-resistance, is that if I can meet what comes to me with a pretty open, non-judgmental heart, I have the capacity to transform it, especially all of us. If millions of us together would actually do this, if we would bless and send love and goodwill to every person knowing that. Okay, all right, so, so when I sit down to meditate, what I have to do is I have to know that the light of God is in Putin. I have to know that. Now I know, it, feel, it looks like from all appearances, it's very covered up, right? It looks like it's very, very covered up. And then when I honestly look at myself and I tell the truth, whenever I have behaved as not my best self, whenever I've made really bad choices, when I've been hurtful to other people, it was not because I was immersed in my oneness with God. It was the opposite. It's because I was so far away from knowing my awareness, uh, from having an awareness of my oneness with God, which of course is an awareness of our oneness with other people. When we don't have that, that's when we behave badly, okay? So, so my job is to sit, I believe, and know that the light of God is in, and you can call it whatever you want to call it, the light of love, the light of Christ, the light of God, you know, the light of the living spirit, it's present in Putin. And we're calling it forth. Now, it might just be like a few little barely there kind of glimmers, right? But if we keep knowing it's there, if we keep knowing it's there, so, so here's the deal. If we keep saying Russia's bad, Putin's bad, they're wrong, what you focus on increases, right? 
And so do we want, do we really need to have more and more and more of that on the face of the earth at this time? No. You know, and so it's, so this is not about being a doormat. This is not condoning other people's bad behavior. When we're talking about sending love, we're not talking about sending love to the personality of the person. We're talking about that place in us that is pure spirit, it's pure God, it's pure love, connecting with that place of spirit that's pure love, that's pure God in the other people. And it's like we're saying, hey, remember you're part of God. You're not this horrible person. You're part of God. You're part of spirit. There is goodness within you. Bring it to the party now, anytime. Between now and right now would be a really good time. <sighs> so when we're... When we use not this idea of non-resistance with some wisdom, right? You see, you get to use discernment on this spiritual path. You know, we're not asking you to leave your brains outside the door when you come to church here. You know, oh, he talks about spiritual things, but they're completely not relevant to our life. No, Ernest Holmes' whole whole teaching is it's supposed to be accessible to us to make our life better. You know, when I make the battle mine, when I I be, you know. I say, here's what I see. When I make the battle mine, I get really anxious, and I get tense. And before I know it, I'm stressed out, you know? And I, and I can see that, like, oh, my gosh, I'm creating the energy that's adding to the problem rather than taking my energy and, and shaping it and molding it in a different direction where I am just peaceful and loving and calm and compassionate, you know? Um, if I'm anxious and tense that's going to postpone any kind of healing, right? So I think, yeah, you know, in the Bible it says, agree with thine adversary. And I know, I know, to my, to my human personality, whenever I read that, I, I, it feels like, oh, the Bible, it's just telling me to lay down. It's just, it's just telling me to, you know, lay down. I'm going to be completely, completely ineffective here in this situation. But what if, what if we all said this adverse condition Somewhere there's a blessing in it. Good will ultimately come from this. Now, I know already it looks like horrible, horrible, bad has already come from it, but God can use everything for our good. So God only ever sends blessings, right? God doesn't send evil. People do that, but God only ever sends a blessing. I was reading in... Um, in the work of Florence Scovel Shin, who was an early metaphysician, and I, and I, and I like her work. She was a big uh, a proponent of affirming. And uh, one of the things that I read from her that I remember is, is none of these things move me. I thought, wow, that's a really solid consciousness. To look at the effects, the events in the world around us and say, none of this moves me. Because, so, so for none of what's going on in the outer world to move me, for all of that to not move me, I have to be so anchored in the presence of God. I have to be so convinced that God is right where I am, that I am surrounded and filled with God's Spirit, just as every person I see is surrounded and filled with God's Spirit. See, if, if I have no response, uh, if I have no emotional response to an inharmonious situation, ultimately, Ultimately, that situation will fade away. See, the work is always, always, always within itself. I hate that about science of mind. Really, I want, I, I want it somebody else to be the problem. I really do. I want, I want somebody else to be the bad guy. I want it to be somebody else's thinking. I want it to be somebody else's behavior. You know, but we do not treat to change other people. Ah, what? <laughs> oh my God, all these years from science of mind? <laughs> We're treating always to change us, to change our consciousness, to change our thinking, to change our perception about what's going on out here. Because when we change in here, then the things outside will also begin to change, right? Because life is a mirror. We teach that. And that is one of the most difficult things in the science of mind to accept, that what I see out here is mirroring back to me some belief I have, perhaps a subconscious belief probably, something that I have not dealt with, something I have not wanted to face. You know, and there are things that we have not wanted to face. And so what happens is we push them down and push them down and push them down and play nice and make pretend that everything is okay, everything's okay, everything's okay, and then what happens is it comes roaring up, usually at the worst time possible, like say during COVID, 
right? And so uh, the work always has to be, you know, like I always, I always tell people in class, you can do the work in your seat, meaning in your, your little chair or your cushion, wherever you might do your prayer or spiritual practice, or you can do it on the street. But we will do the work that we have to do. And so I can do it willingly in my seat at home. I know, I know the things that irritate me. I know the things that get me worked up. I know the places where I'm not loving. I can address those spiritually with these practices at home. And if I don't, the world will initiate me out in the world. That's what happens, you know? If I don't do it, if I don't take care of it in my seat, I'm going to take care of it on the street is what's going to happen. The universe will send people into my life. You know, and it's so tempting to think, oh, what are these people doing here? You know, oh, how did they get here? They're not a reflection of my consciousness, are they? When in fact, actually they are. It's because of my consciousness that sometimes people show up to show me what I have to work on within myself. <sighs> oh, life is a mirror. What I see in others is in me in some capacity. You know, when Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, they say there were two thieves to either side of him uh, who were also crucified. Metaphysically, they, the two thieves represent the past and the future, you know? And so for us, I think, okay, well, our job is to bless the past and then forget about it, really, to bless it, you know, keep whatever was good. It's part of who we are. It's part of our consciousness, but just let the rest go, because if we don't, it just keeps us in bondage. You know, you can never remember the past enough to be healed today, you know, to heal your body, to heal your relationships. You know, we just love to go back down memory lane. And the other one is to bless the future, knowing that it holds opportunity, joy, experiences for all of us. And, and the point is, bless the past, Bless the future. Live fully in the present now. I move slowly in the morning. It's not my uh, most energetic time of day. I'm sure that's true for others as well. Um, but I also know that because my body is moving slowly in the morning, it's a good time to put in uh, something really good in my mind to begin my day. You know, so I always... It's a joke about this, and I say, well, you know, what do you say when you wake up in the morning? It's like, good God, morning, you know, or good morning, God. What's it going to be? Now, I know a lot of people who are good God, morning people, and I have certainly been that person myself in the past, but now I try to be more on the good morning, God uh, side of the street, you know, so I like to start, and I think what we start with is important because it really does lay a foundation for our day. How we talk to ourselves, how we uh, affirm uh, what the message we give ourselves. So something like, All right, good morning, God, thy will be done today. Miracles will follow miracles. Wonders never cease. Thank you, God, for this new day. I think that's a good way to start the day. You know, something like that. Just thank you for this new day. I know it's going to be good. See, and if I make a habit of this, what I see is that good comes from it. Because, you know, um, there was that old joke about um, a baseball player, and the pitcher throws the ball, and it winds up in the catcher's mitt, and the umpire doesn't say anything. And the player turns to the ump and says, well, ump, what is it? And the umpire says, it ain't nothing till I call it something. <laughs> right? And so we get to call it. We get to call it all the time. You know, like it says in the Bible also, that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Years ago, I had um, uh, worked with a family, and I had done the service for, for the, the father of the family. I had done his memorial service. And then a number of years later, um, the daughters came back for me to do the mother's service. And, and this was just, they were just, they wanted me to understand their mother's character. And, and they said, this was our mom. This was our mom. Every day of our life, she would come into, when we were growing up, she'd come into our room and open the drapes and say, girls, get up. This is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And then she'd go off and she'd go downstairs and start working on breakfast. But every morning, we were met with this extraordinary optimism about God has made today for us. We should embrace it. We should be glad for it. We should be grateful for it. And and they would talk about how their mother was just this incredibly optimistic person. Even with extraordinary challenges, she had an optimism that lifted her above what seemed to be dragging her down. So 
I think it's important for us, and I hope that you will start with me this week, to say something really good to yourself first thing in the morning. And I'm asking us for just one week, for one week, if we would send just tremendous, like, hmm. if we would send just tremendous love and care and compassion and goodwill and blessings to everyone in the world, and you know where the hot spots are, and you know the people you resist sending it to. Because you know, it occurs to me this week that the people I resist sending love to, the people I don't want to pray for them to be happy, prosperous, joyous, and free, um, those are where my biggest healings will be. You know? So by not praying for them, I'm actually telling the universe, I want to wait for my life to get better. I'm willing to wait for blessings because I would rather hang on to this story and this drama and this upset. And, and, you know, and, and see, I know to the, to the human mind, it looks like I'm being rational here. I'm, cons I'm showing concern, you know, but that's not the mind we want leading. You know, we want that, that spiritual perspective, that mind in us that is aligned with the mind of God. We want that to be what leads us. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, just being still and reflecting on the spiritual truth that we are surrounded and filled with the spirit of the living God, a God that is love, God that is life, God that is joy and abundance and creativity and wholeness, God that is absolutely all of it, and we know we are one with that presence, that power, that principle. So the spirit of the living God within each and every one of us is the most true and real thing about us. And so in this awareness today, I speak the word that we are non-resistant. That yes, absolutely, our hearts are wide open. And the love of God that is so filling our very being, we allow it to emanate out from us and wrap around the entire globe so that all people everywhere are touched in a profound way by the love of God that we know to be the truth about them. And now take a moment as you take a deep breath and think about those people that you don't particularly want to love, that you don't want to see blessed, that you don't care for or like. All right, tell the truth. You just wish they'd be struck by lightning. Those are the ones that we're after today, that this is where our spiritual work is. We're going to open our heart that little bit more to include them, knowing that somehow they're off track, but the Spirit of God within them is the truth about them. And even though that light may be very, very dim, we know it is certainly there. And so we will be the ones to fan the flame and claim a greater spiritual truth for us and for the whole world that we live in. And so now, bring to mind your parents and children, family members and friends, loved ones, whoever you hold near and dear, and include them in our prayer as well, surrounding them with love and light and healing, lifting them up high above condition, knowing that who they are is so much more than the difficulty they face. So we bless our church and we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And we bless our very own church, all of its members, our congregation, our friends. I know that God surrounds and fills and is the most true, real thing about each and every one of us, and we are blessed to be together today. So with a heart that's full, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. 
I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. my ears and my heart. I have every CD you have and they're all getting played this afternoon. Now if you too would like some Miss Sherry's music, you may find it at SherryWilliamsMusic.com. That's Sherry with an S and Williams with an S at the end of it. SherryWilliamsMusic.com. And did you bring some for those that are, oh, so those that are fortunate enough to be here may take her home with you. Okay. Um, We've made it easy for you to make donations. You may text GIVE, the number is inside your program, 
or use the QR code, that's this cute little square on the back, and just make your donations that way. Or go to the church um, website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and make your donations. And prayer with your practitioner is available after service in person in the sanctuary or on Zoom. The flowers this morning, they're real. They're just lovely. They're in honor of Lynn Romanowski from Vaughn, and I apologize if I slaughter your name, Sarah Enos. Ian's. Okay, Soroyans. They're from Vaughn. Okay. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation will begin at 6.50 p.m. and service at 7 p.m. Reverend Sidney's topic this week is Your World Has Power Behind It. Our grief support group led by practitioner Carol Winnaker will meet on Zoom today at 1 p.m. And Reverend Mark, Dr. Mark, I'm so sorry, uh, his trip to Japan will be in o October of 2022. Join Dr. Mark with his spiritual adventure of a lifetime. If you haven't traveled with him, you just haven't. It's just nothing but first class, and it's just a wonderful experience. I've taken two trips with him. Uh, information is available on the patio and also at our website. You don't want to miss out on this. If you've made a journey to the Heart Pledge this year and have not picked up your special gift, please see your contact Doreen in the office. Zoom virtual patio is available before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And Zoom meditation is every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and sign up for weekly e blasts and monthly newsletters. Let's stand and sing the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.